All right. Oops. Oopsie. Oopsies. Oopsies. All right. Can you guys hear me? Everything should be good. Hello. Hello. So, is everything working? Is everything is working? All right. All right. Thank you. So, hello everyone. I am Playbox. I play Rainbow Six Siege competitively. I've been playing for about four years now. And I will be your host for today's R6 workshop, following the other three workshops later on, which I'll be talking briefly about later. So this has been um, thankfully organized by the Rainbow Six Siege com Singapore community, R6SC, and also in collaboration with Scape's uh, community rallies. So um, throughout this broadcast, if you have any questions about the game, feel free to write it down in the Twitch chat. Or if you're a participant, you can write it in the questions uh, chat channel in the Discord that I think Fox has already shown y'all. So I hope that's, you know, chill. And then, um, but also, right, I would like to suggest that try to keep it within today's topics where today's topics will be talking more about like operators. So if you have questions, for example, like how does Bandit's battery work or like uh, how many gadgets can Jaeger's ADS catch, stuff like this, whatever within the operator, uh, Try to limit your questions within those topics. And uh, also, oh, this one. This one, I don't think many of you know, but thankfully, we've been able to strike a deal, a wonderful deal where if you manage, if you participate in three out of five of the workshops, hopefully you can see my hands because I know I look really dumb. But if you participate in three out of five of the workshops, you will be able to receive 2,400 in-game Rainbow Six credits for free. For free! You just gotta come for three workshops and you get 2,400 Rainbow Six credits. I think that's that's pretty pog. You can buy like... When I become a pro, you can buy my own like in-game skins or charm or something, right? So I think that's cool. And also, uh, if you enjoyed today's session, I highly suggest that you are more than welcome to like uh, sign up for the remaining of the workshops. As I said, one, you get credits. Two, you get to see my beautiful face. Three, you get better, right? I mean, that's a win, win, win. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's a steal. That stonks, bro. All right. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get started, yeah? So, um, yeah. Hope y'all enjoy the session. And uh, to the viewers, y'all can sit back, relax, enjoy yourselves. For the fellow participants, I hope y'all get to learn something new. And, uh... Yeah, if anything, you can always drop me a DM private, and I'll also reply that after the stream. All chill. Let's go. Let me remove my sticky notes because I would have failed that intro. Haha. <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, <clears throat> a brief little intro about me. Um, my name's Geraldo. Uh, oh, sorry. My name's Geraldo. I go by the name Playbox as well for my games. I rank Diamond in the... And uh, season, um, my highest season was 5,000 MMR. Uh, I've been playing for four years now. I mainly play as an in-game leader for my team, and I'm also a utility flex player, which is um, I will be talking a bit more about roles in this uh, class today. So um, yeah, y'all will know a bit more. But basically, I like to play stuff a bit more brain, not so much pew pew bang bang. <coughs> also, if you think I'm a handsome pretty boy with a nice voice you can follow my Instagram or my Twitter um, I will give you uh, my love if you do that all right hey welcome everyone to the chat I see people streaming in welcome welcome all right so a bit more about today's breakdown so there'll be two parts in today's session where it's split in one hour portions so um, for the part one, we'll be talking more about what are some important um, operators you can play on both attacking and on defense. And we'll also be going through a bit of an overview on like what an operator lineup should look like, like what a team lineup should look like, what what you need, what you should have in your roster before like um, playing, and also like general lineups that can kind of be applied to almost any situation. And uh, also, we'll be going through like. Uh, overview, just a very brief overview on like other season operators, like you know, like the newer operators, for example. We won't really be focusing too much on it, but definitely we'll talk about it a bit, and especially if you have questions, then we can address that. Part two, we'll be talking about just uh, another breakdown, but it's more on play style, like whether you should play an entry, maybe you should play like a flex, maybe you should play hard breach, stuff like that, just depending on 
uh, your personality, I guess. Is that the word? And uh, yeah, we try to figure out what best suits you. So part one. Let's go. So for part one, talking about like the key operators and stuff, um, I'll be keeping these to like the basics of like uh, the first few operators, like uh, how to say, like year one operators, so that um, everyone knew or not, you all would have these operators by now. So yeah, so definitely these operators do have quote unquote replacements, like soft replacements, but uh, we won't be covering that too much today. That'll be more for like the advanced class. So a uh, general lineup or uh, rule of thumb is you would like to have a thermite, a ash, a thatcher, and a sledge. The thinking emoji is basically flexible where you pick more of um, what your team may need in a certain situation. All right, so example like this, flexible can be IQ. So what IQ does, she can scan gadgets. Uh, what Jackal does, I mean, what Gridlock does, which is the lady in the middle, she gets to put these traps so that uh, enemies can't just flank for free, stuff like that. Uh, so another one, Oh yeah, sorry, I, I skipped a point, but um, to the participants, I would highly suggest you stick to these kinds of operators because uh, some of you are a lot more new, some of you are a bit more seasoned, but uh, let's just try to you know, help everyone learn here. We're all just here to have a good time and to learn something new. So try to stick to the earlier operators if possible so it doesn't overcomplicate everyone and it doesn't like bombard the newer players, especially with too much information. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, for defenders, what you would like to have, for example, is like a smoke, mute, bandit, or a Jaeger. So um, these operators are generally more of like uh, operators you can use in almost any bomb site, like any any time you can use these operators, and it's never really seen as a wrong choice. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anything. Gridlock thick, hell yeah, same here. All right, so flexible, same thing. It's just whatever may be the best uh, to use for that specific bomb site, that specific situation. Uh, if you have any questions, the facilitators definitely also will be able to help you guys out with what to pick. So yeah, for just an example, it'd be things like Valkyrie, Echo, and Maestro, where all three of these operators are very good at giving intel. So, you know, um, Y'all will also find out that as defenders, you would really like to have intel operators like more cameras, more drones, so that you can get more information on how the attackers uh, plan to push, so you know where they're coming from. Just a general rule of thumb is, the more information you have, you know, you can be more proactive and you don't make so many mistakes or get caught out of nowhere, yeah. Alright, I'm a bit fast actually, I didn't realize I was that fast. Alright, let's see a bit of a chat. Living the gridlock hitbox, let's not talk about that, man. <laughs> I love to play Monty when in a five stack. Any pointers? Uh, Monty, Monty is an interesting operator where it's like um, uh, it's not like a, you know, you're not in there to like shoot people, right? But definitely as a Monty, um, it's very important to know when you can push alone, and when you shouldn't be pushing, because as a Monty or a shield player, it's very easily countered if the enemy knows what they're doing. So try not to get yourself stuck in a door, try not to push through a tight hallway so you don't get like smoked off by smoke canisters or stuff like that. Try to be in an open space so that you always have like a way to walk around and try not to um, be caught from too many angles. Like let's say there's one on the left, one on the right, it just means don't go. Yeah, stuff like that. Because staying alive as a Monty, uh, treat yourself like um, an invincible drone from the front where just being alive, you're able to give your teammates information and at the same time, you can always push out defenders from their comfortable positions. Uh, what are your views on trap-based operators uh, like Legion? Now, these operators, by the way, uh, they aren't inside of like the year one as I'm saying, but uh, definitely there are other trap operators and this kind of applies to even like Capcom or Frost where uh, definitely for like new players or uh, participants as well, you all can try these operators, they're quite okay. Um, but yeah, uh, basically things like trap operators, they, they work. They work definitely, but um, example for Legion, Legion's not as uh, prominent as it used to be, definitely still good for the information gathering. 
But generally speaking, uh, unless you wish to spread your team, your, your defenders in a very like wide space, I wouldn't really recommend playing trap operators because uh, you won't be make you won't be making use of the intel anyways. If that makes sense, like you try to put your legion goo mines on spaces which you don't put barb wise. For example, so if you can't make use of the gadget, it's always better to just pick something that benefits the whole team as a whole. Like example, Jaeger always works out, stuff like that. Uh, mute. All right. Um. Let me go and set up the Rainbow Six lobby first, and um. Yeah, we can probably get the first practical session started soon. If Fox is in the chat, I will be here. Mr. Foxman, R6SC. Mr. Foxman. Alright, if you guys still have any questions, y'all can just uh, throw it in while we get some of the people to... Oh, I got invited. Oh, that's confusing. I get what? Oh, that's a lot of people. Wow, just accept it. Hey, <laughs> all right. Good luck, participants. Nah, it's no pressure, dude. It's no we join on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I need to spectate. I've invited you. Yeah. All right. So, uh, just a bit more of an overview, we'll be going through um, a 3-3 format. So basically what that means is we'll be playing three sides on attack, three sides on defense. Uh, to make things simpler, I will be mainly focusing on the attacking side first. So I'll be spectating the attackers for this um, entire game of six rounds. And then on the second practical session, I'll be going through... Um, the defender side for the six rounds. Playbox vs Fox. Hey, come on, man. We don't want to just see me dumpster a dude, dude. <laughs> but yeah, let me just see. Is there any questions in the Discord? Nope. All right. Sick. Looks like everyone's ready to clap cheeks. Yeah. So, uh... Just waiting for everyone to join in. Play box versus Flynn. Sushi take out only. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Alright. Um I could brief I could talk about the um other operators outside of year one as well. If you guys uh, are curious to know more about them or like how you should use them, when you should use them, I can cover that today actually. But uh, because as long as you keep your topic within operators and not like um, how do you peak or like uh, you know stuff like this, like I I won't really want to answer those because I'll be covering those in future lessons. So try to keep it within today's topic. Or if you need like a brief overview from the last topic, I don't mind briefly glancing through. Oh, good morning, Mister Captain. After where is afternoon? Oh yeah, it's afternoon already. Damn, sick. Box, you wouldn't be single by any chance, would you? What if I was? Because I am. Not taking part in the workshop. Hi, hi, no. Uh, Alright, sick. Alright, we're thinking on one more guy. So one more guy. Everyone got your coffee ready? It's an early morning. Everyone knows that gamers only wake up in the afternoon. <laughs> everyone only. Everyone knows gamers wake up in the afternoon, dude. We're on that grind. Morning coffee session. Why wouldn't you use more than one operating defense that provides information like Velk and make sure Intel operators are its own category on defense and you should definitely try to always pick those if possible. Oops. Yeah. But definitely try to pick Intel operators when you can. Valkyrie is a very, very strong operator. Echo is... Oh! So good. Echo is so, so good. Thanks for the follow as well. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Um, Maestro, very, very, very good. Mozzie, insane. Mute, insane. Vigil, insane. Gotta invite Wokhei. Alright. Wokhei, Wokhei. Invited, Mr. Wokhei. Echo is always banned. 
because he's that good. <laughs> I woke up at 7 a.m. to sound of my neighbor beating a frying pan and spatulas. Dude, she's calling aliens, bro. <laughs> she's summoning aliens. But one rule of thumb as a defender is uh, make it as hard as possible for the attackers. So let's say you want to play Intel operators, which you should. You really should. You either play for denying attackers information or you play to not to give your own team information. So if you want to give your own team information, you play like Valkyrie. If you want to deny information, you play like Vigil, Mozzie. Let me type. Is everyone ready? Fox, can you check if everyone's ready? Kind of busy. Good still going on. All right. Echo is always... Yeah, I read that already. Yeah. Everyone good? Everyone chill? Everyone right? Everyone cool? Alright, I'm just gonna start it right now. Let's go. I'll be spectating the attackers first. So... So no pressure. <laughs> alright. Alright, alright, alright. Just saying, I'm not here to cast. I know some of you know me as a caster. But, uh... I'm here to teach and guide people, not... Cast and make people sound like they're bolo, so, uh... Keep it calm and chill, alright? I'm not gonna go, like, right now to 1v2 situation or anything. Alright. Okay, so... Let's talk a bit about the operator lineup that currently the attackers are picking. This is a very good lineup, um, especially for a map like Clubhouse. So we are choosing Clubhouse because Clubhouse is a very basic standard map Attack where um, and it's very friendly for especially like new players <clears throat> because it's like um, I say it's like a staple map basically. Yes. So um, something to note is. The wacky, right, for example, we go from top down on the blue side. The left side are the attackers. Um, from top down, we have Thatcher, which disables, like, batteries, mute jammers. So that helps, like, heart breaches, like Thermite, Hibana. In this case, like, Rex G picked Ace, which is, like, one of the newer operators who can also open up reinforced walls. So that's what heart breaches tend to do, where they just open up reinforced walls. So um, you always want to have a Thatcher if you can. If not, bring something that can help you open up walls. So like Kali can work. Um, IQ could work if you can play vertically. So yeah, right now, you'll probably get to see how a Thermite and Thatcher plays. Considering both players are playing relatively close together. So right now, you see what was just thrown is called an EMP by Thatcher. So this is a gadget to disable a lot of electronics so that your other teammates can open up these walls, as you can see Ace has now done. So this is the common interaction between a uh, EMP, Thatcher, and also a hard creature, where you, they tend to usually play close together so that it can open up the walls into the bomb site. So yeah, pretty chill, standard stuff. So now as you can see, with this hole open, which leads directly to the bomb site, it gives a big advantage to the attackers as the defenders won't have much um, comfortable space to play around because if they want to rotate, they'll get shot. If they want to hide in that room, they would get shot. So this is why it's very important for the attackers to bring Thermite, bring Thatcher, and once you get that wall open, it becomes a lot, a lot harder for the opposing, uh, opposing team. Yeah, it's always good to have these kinds of, um, these two types of categories. Unfortunately, they did, uh, die. So, um, you know, they can't really make full use of this whole opening, but definitely it's still a lot of pressure. So, uh, example, what, what, what K just got hit with, the Zofia player, is, um, the Echo Charge, which makes you disorientated, so... That is an Intel operator, for example, for the defending side. I'll most likely be talking about that on the later game, so no worries about the defenders. Mr. Rex G going for a bit of a bolo. But uh, yeah, as you can see, with this wall op okay, it looks like he's not going to make use of it, but it's alright. 
So the issue with not having these hard breaches like Thermite is, example, right now you see Rex, uh, it's no, Wok Hei, right? It, he only has this tight doorway to push from, which gives it, which makes it a lot easier for defenders to identify um, where the attackers are coming from. Because let's say there is a door and there's a reinforced wall, right? Right next to it. If you don't open this wall, the defenders would only know to watch this doorway, which means the moment the attackers walk through the door, it's very disadvantageous for them, and you know it's like free pickings for the defenders. But let's say the door and the wall, you open up the wall, so now you're opening up two different angles that the defenders would have to watch. So it's a lot harder for them to uh, coordinate. Like, example, person A and person B, they might be watching the same doorway, right? So it's a lot of miscommunication and. It gives a lot more angles for the attackers to use so that they can look through um, angles that you wouldn't be able to see from from the door. So let's say there's a box, right? From an angle, you can't see them from the door, but let's say you open the wall right next to the box. Attackers now the defenders the aren't able to play behind the box, so they're forced to move around, and that's when they expose themselves and they get picked off. You got the plat too because of me? Actually, that's true, actually. That's quite funny. You do your job placing down armor and the team doesn't trash talk you. Uh, Rook. I wouldn't suggest playing Rook because it's a lot more individually based, even though his gadget technically gives armor to your teammates. But um, I suggest you playing other operators because um, later on in the game, you would not really be having much rook because it's it's not that great. Attackers are heading out I suggest you playing more like intel operators like valkyrie so on pulse or you can play more supportive role like smoke because smoke is basically good 90% of the time pick more universal operators basically try not to rely too much on the ACOG because um, you would take a lot of gunfights unnecessary gunfights that you wouldn't have took with a hollow sight yeah. So I wouldn't really suggest it. So it looks like now Wokke is pushing alone, right? Um, from last week we've learned that when you push alone, you try to have someone drone you. If not, have someone push with you. So um, just a note. A bit out of topic from last week, but you know, just a refresher for you all. So, same thing, uh, the attackers have brought a hard breach this time on Hibana, which is this operator I'm spectating now, instead of a uh, Thermite. So the difference is Hibana is just better at opening hatches as compared to opening up walls. So just uh, a small note. So now as you can see, a lot of these reinforced walls make it so that it's very hard for the attackers to enter the bomb site while at the same time making it very hard for them to uh, clear different angles like uh, like what we learned from last week you should always try to play behind uh, structures like walls, play behind tables, play behind boxes so this makes it harder for the enemy <coughs> sorry makes it harder for the enemy team to shoot you so clearing and opening up these walls make it so that they can't play behind these boxes so they are a lot more exposed Alright. So now, as you can see, the combination between Thatcher and Hibana, both of them are able to open up this um, hatch together. And they're playing together, so this is what makes it, you know, team, team play. So, uh... Not much is really going on now, but I'll just like to give a brief. Um, that's a nice pick. A brief. Never mind, it looks like a lot is going on. So. Oh wow. See, um, one thing I would like to say is you saw the Thatcher, right? Throw the EMP. Now, throwing an EMP not only disables like uh, cameras, it disables things like goo mines. So, one thing to note is. 
let's say you want to push this very long hallway and you know there's an enemy lesion or you know there's like probably an Ella trap which is like uh, disorientates you right like example the echo drone that we saw um, throwing an EMP disables these gadgets so that you don't get hit by it you don't get affected by it so example for echo drones you won't get spotted for lesion mines you won't be able to step on it so uh, the enemies won't know where you're coming from so much at least and you won't be slowed so uh, what they should have done there was actually throw the EMP before they entered rather than throw it once they got hit by the gadget. Because one thing to note is the EMP gadget can actually go and hit vertical floors. So that would mean that, let's say I know there's an ADS on the first floor and I'm on the second floor, I could throw it directly above it. Boom! Gadget gone. Without you having to risk your life by having to be in the first floor in the first floor. Does it disable or destroy? It depends on the uh, on the gadget. So example for Echo Drones or Valkyrie cameras, it would disable for a period of time. For things like lesion mines, uh, batteries, mute jammers, it destroys the gadget completely. Five seconds left before insertion. Oh, about the question? What question? Sorry. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. Would you be talking about gun choices and operators when I say operators without op? op. <laughs> uh, gun choices, I could briefly go through a bit later because that was actually from last week so I, I wouldn't really want to spend too much time on it. Uh, but I could give a very short brief one if we have extra time. Most likely we will be, so no, it should be fine. I'll just be talking about brief attachments, I won't be going through the guns itself. Uh, if you have more specific questions or anything, you just DM me on Discord. I got you, dude. I got you. So something that's something to note as well. Now I'm speculating the player is this is Maverick. Now Maverick is very interesting. So it's like a hard okay, breacher, but you don't necessarily oh, he's did it wrong. But it's, you don't necessarily open up walls, but you definitely uh open up these feet holes to oh my that's very dangerous. <laughs> but <laughs> You can open up feet holes so that uh, batteries can't be placed and you can shoot all the mute jammers and everything. So probably one of the hardest attacking operators to master but definitely very worth learning how to play. So yeah, if you're a new player, I don't really suggest you play Maverick. But if you're getting a better feel for the game, really really suggest you to play Maverick because it's relatively hard to be good at it. Is it possible to get create the hole without getting zapped? Yes. If you practice enough, you won't be hit at all. Oh wow. Nice one tap. So uh I wouldn't really want to talk too much about how to play Maverick because that's not so much in the lesson and it's a bit advanced in a sense. We won't really be covering it, but um basically you can always use like the indication of the metal sound so you can probably go to a t hunt or a custom and test it for yourself uh if there's a reinforced wall right you always want to make sure the corners closer to the the undestructible wall that once you when you open a hole you hear like a metal plate dropping so it's like a boom like metal plate dropping that's when you know you did it correctly Attackers after that you just draw a straight line until you hear another metal break so it's it's a lot of sound indication to know whether you did it right and definitely when you're making the holes try to have like your teammates watch the holes because you never know when uh defenders trying to be sneaky and they play like really close so you know you put your life at risk it's not that great. What are my thoughts on Vigil? Vigil is a very strong operator. Especially on... Um, I don't think I want to talk too much on the why it's so good advanced wise. But generally it's uh, Intel denial operators. So basically that means that if you're roaming the attackers can't drone you and if attackers can't drone you usually they'll be too scared to even push you. Oh wow. So if Vigil used well, it's 
very very strong especially used in certain maps where there's a lot of vertical floors because the scanner actually scans multiple floors so let's say I'm on the first floor I turn on the gadget no one will know that I'm on the first floor or the second floor very strong operator but um, the utility can't be used for the team so just keep that in mind So right now we see that the Thermite and like the Thatcher, Maverick, they aren't playing so much together and this is um, like a mistake, right? Uh, because to open up walls which have been batteried, you would need the Thatcher. And for the Thatcher to get the walls open, they would need the Thermite. So usually you would see the Thatcher and Thermite being paired up. So this is just something to note for the rest of y'all in this chat. See, as you can see, they battery this um, barbed wire, so that denies them from droning in, which is quite smart. You don't really see this too much in professional play, but uh, it can work, definitely, when used correctly. As you can see, they stepped inside a goo mine again, so this is another thing which the Thatcher needs to take note of, which you need to throw your gadget before you push. So, yeah. Vigil is advanced player only? Um, no. But to make full use of it, I would say it's it's Reloading. relatively advanced, yes. It looks like there's a bit of a flank actually coming. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Let's just see what's going. Yeah. Now, uh something I would like to note for the attackers especially is you should always try to keep in mind to put like a drone to watch. So that you know when an enemy is flanking. As you can see, cornbread gets a free kill so as you can see this echo drone let me try and find it yeah here this is why echo is so strong uh i'll be covering this more on the defending side later on but basically not only can you spot people but your drones are translucent so it's a bit hard to see and you can disorientate them so that's like three and three right not only that you can also deny a plant so if you can pick Echo, pick Echo. <laughs> he's a, he's so he has everything: good gun, good gadgets, good everything. So, highly suggest. Uh, Vig is a good operator while his gadgets in a two-edge blade. Uh not really. Um, Vigil is very good at wasting time. So, as a Vigil, you try not to take too many gunfights. As a Vigil, you try to not ever be found. You don't want to be found as a vigil. You just turn in your signal, attackers, attackers will have to guess where you are. So now let's go back to the attacker side. So um, for vigil, let's say you're playing a first floor bomb side, right? You could be turning on your signal on the first floor, but attackers will think you are roaming because your signal is still present on the second floor on the drones. You know, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of brain game in vigil. Why is Bandit's win rate so low, even though he's an essential operator like Jaeger? Uh, I wouldn't say he's essential. He definitely is never really bad. But I don't think win rate... Okay. Uh, if you ask me for my personal opinion, my competitive opinion, because I play in uh, scrims, I play against pro teams, like that you see, like, gi uh, not Giants, but like Xavier, uh, EFY, all these tiny teams. Uh, the win delta that Ubisoft released, uh, I don't really suggest new players, especially to look at those, because most of the time it's it's um, misleading information. If I have to be very honest, uh, there's no such thing as tier list in Rainbow Six. But generally speaking, the operators that help the team instead of solo, right? tend to be better but I don't suggest you looking at like win rate and going oh is this because it's bad is this because it's good uh, if anything you should probably look at pro players and just see like what is actually good and bad pro players as in uh, pro games not like uh, not like ranked games oh, that's a lot of questions I'll get back to y'all oh that's a nice shot sorry yeah, I'll, I'll get back to a bit of the questions right now. 
I'll talk a bit more about the operators as you can see. So, same thing as y'all noticed as well. Uh, the other side is not like the other team is now playing the Thatcher Thermite, which is it's a staple combination ever since this game first released. So, yeah, it's always good to pair them up together. Oh, unlucky. So, with this wall open, as you can see, this entire bomb site is now left empty, like this B bomb site, because with that wall open, it's very hard for the defenders to run around because it leaves them very, very exposed. Coffee time. He's insane! Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That was crazy! Nice shot. Didn't expect to see that today. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but but Wind Delta don't 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 treat it like it's you know the rule of thumb. Yeah. Given a choice, would you prefer Bandit or Kaid? Uh, Bandit. Kaid is only for a hatch. If it's not for a hatch, Bandit. One hundred percent Bandit. And there's a few hatches which you can actually use jammers. Ah, uh, I won't be talking about which ones, you can probably YouTube it, but uh... Bandit's definitely better. Because you have 4 and you can also trick, I won't be talking how to trick. But uh, if you're curious on what I mean by tricking and why Bandit's so much better is... Go on YouTube, something called Bandit Trick. Bandit Tricking, and I'm pretty sure you can find something. If not, you can ask me. Alright, lots of chat. <laughs> You try not to bring both. While he's an essential operator like Jaeger, he's also an operator which isn't as versatile as Jaeger in my opinion. And that's my logic with it, and also because he's mainly meant to be on site rather than on roam. Uh, you could use either on roam. Uh, the downside with Jaeger on roam, a lot of people get this misconception. The downside with Jaeger on roam actually is that he does not have nitro cells like C4s. So let's say you're playing on the second floor. Without a C4, you won't be able to deny a plant. Like, let's say you know an uh, enemy is planting already on the second floor, but you can't deny the plant because you can't C4 the guy from below, right? So that that's a downside of Jaeger that, you know, not many people take into account. Just something to know. I see, don't mind fly feeling whatever up, so I just pick the highest winner. Yeah, you shouldn't try to do that. I, I wouldn't suggest it, definitely. Oh no. Oh no, even more oh no. Ah! As you can see, okay, now now we'll... Okay, this is why uh, Intel operators are so good, right? Like, you have a camera, so you know when it's safe to run out, when it's safe to jump out, when it's safe to peek, when it's not safe to peek. So, yeah, something to note for the defending players. <coughs> but let's go back to the attackers. Focus on them. See, as you can see, uh, they picked two hard breaches this time, Hibana and Thermite. Uh, this is good because on this map, okay, sorry, I apologize. On this map, it's very good to bring two hard breaches because there's a lot of hatches and a lot of walls that you can open. So uh, if you're if you have a few friends like teammates and you're playing clubhouse, especially the staple map, try to have two hard breaches. It's a lot easier. It's a lot more versatile. So yeah, something to know. I wouldn't suggest playing Rook either. <laughs> Try to stick to team-based operators. Smoke, Mute, Bandit, uh, Kaid, Valkyrie, Echo, Maestro, Mozzie is good. Whatever gadget that benefits your team as a whole, instead of just you individually, tends to be good. Usually. Tanking bullets doesn't really help. Something I like to see from these attackers, um, as you can see, they're playing very split up. Uh, because ooh, okay. So this gives them a lot of uh, cut off angles, right? So one guy can push more from the left, forcing the defenders to rotate to the right, which then the attacker outside the window, pew pew, shoots everyone, and everyone's dead. So it's very nice. It's a lot of chat. I like it. Keep it up. Keep talking. I'll get back to y'all. Oh wow. Aggress- Ooh! Dude, this guy's insane. It's actually the best player. 
Oh my gosh! Dude, chill! <laughs> oh my goodness! Yo, this guy is crazy! <laughs> I just. <laughs> Alright. Um. We could do two more rounds. Two more rounds and we'll end the first practical. So hop on the escape twitch right after. Dude, that guy's insane. This guy is actually. Why is he here? Dude, he should be teaching, not me. Damn. All right. Okay, let me let me cover up a bit of the questions. Um. Actually, fun fact: armor doesn't suppress damage unless it just stops you from being killed instantly. Yep. Attackers so it basically gives you bomb. the guarantee that you'll be downed. So there's always that small chance you can get revived, which I don't really such a shit I don't think it's that great. Instead, maybe you could just use like Jaeger, you put your ADS, you wouldn't have died by the grenade in the first place, you know, something like that. It also lessens damage rate, but just not for all of Yeah, but it's, eh, it, it's, it suppresses damage, but it's not worth. Like, uh, most assault rifles, it doesn't change the amount of bullets it takes to kill. Like, example, if it's three already. It's not gonna suddenly become four, unless you're using like an SMG. So attackers don't really have SMGs, so I don't suggest it. If anything, you should still just play Doc. But I also don't suggest you play Doc. So The tanking bullets are the only thing I can do, I'm bad. Uh, you shouldn't think of it that way, dude. Uh, it, it takes a while to get used to movement in this game because it's all like leaning, CQE, and all that stuff. But uh, you should take your time, dude. It's not a rush. A lot of people take very long to learn this game as well, so... Don't take it to heart, dude. The most important thing is you enjoy the process and you know if you really want to improve you remain focused right like you don't care too much about what you can't control you just control Attackers yourself make sure you're focused you're not tilting all over the place and yeah and everything should be fine now something that i don't really like to see is uh this Ibana player is playing very individually like very solo so it's very risky especially if you don't have a teammate to help you out uh the idea is there but uh, it's a bit too early, like if they pushed a bit later, it'd be better. Uh, I want to bring y'all back also to what Cornbread is playing. Wow. So this is IQ. What IQ does is she can scan gadgets. This is one of those flex operators I was talking about in the slides earlier. Uh, where you get to spot things like drones. You can spot things like Echo, Valkyrie, Kai charges, pulse scanning, which means if the pulse is scanning, you can actually scan him directly and shoot him through walls, so... Pretty nuts. IQ, very, very good. Especially the gun buffs recently, very, very good. As you can see now, for free! She does not even need to walk down the hallway exposing herself, she can get these gadgets from above. So... Incredible. Incredible. Good stuff. Oh, that's awkward. But yeah, this is good stuff. From this IQ, very nice. Um, something to note is for the attackers, try not to be too passive. Uh, oopsies, I dropped my light. But uh, generally, the more time you give defenders, the it's it's a lot harder to win as an attacker. Because you don't have the time to work with to decide how you want to play. This wall opening is very, very good. So, bringing back to what I said earlier, opening these walls gives more angles to see into this bomb site. Ten seconds to go. So that makes it very hard for defenders to play and they would have to engage in play instead of just hide behind a table. Operators you are out of time. I mean my hair is scuffed but uh, I hope y'all don't mind. Uh, my hair has been pretty bad past few days. <laughs> Um, but as you saw there at, at the end, uh, I'll be talking more about that operator also. It's called Smoke. Smoke. Very good operator. Like, 
You don't know what to play? Smoke. So good. Opens rotation of shotguns. Um, smoke canisters to deny plant, deny doorways, deny hallways. Very, very good operator. there. Each canister lasts 9 seconds, so you could stack it up to basically about 30 seconds of effective time to stop an entire door push. So, it's crazy. It's crazy good. Sorry. Yeah, you see, so Bandit and Jaeger are better team picks. Uh, Jaeger, you can have it like 90% of the... 99.9% .9 of the time. Bandit... 80, 80%, I'd say. Sometimes you can just pick a mute instead of a bandit. Bandit's more if you want to trick. So as I was saying earlier, it's like bandit tricking, right? Which uh, I'm not really covering today. But uh, you can just YouTube it. It's called bandit tricking. So if you're not planning to do that, you might as well play mute. Alright, let's see what the attackers are doing. Ten seconds to insertion. New feet up. Five seconds left before insertion. <laughs> Attacker's objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. Attackers have dropped the bomb diffuser. Uh, Mossy is good to have, but not a must-have. Yes, correct. Um. So there's uh there's two styles, right? Uh, I, 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 I briefly will say for now is um, Intel denial and Intel. So Intel is Valkyrie, Echo, Maestro, where you give your team information, right? Because you see the enemy, you can tell them, hey, they're here. But there's Intel denial operators, and these are mute. These are Mozzie, Vigil. Which denies the attackers from joining you or joining into the bomb site. So either ways, these two are very, very good. And in combination, if you can, it wastes so much time. And uh, rule of thumb, still, I'll say the golden rule: the lesser time left in the round, the more advantageous for the defenders. So as attackers, try to be very um, focused. Try not to waste your time. On just like holding a window if it's no there's no point right try to always engage in something open a wall uh, take rooms that you would need if you need this hallway to push the bomb site control it as fast as you can yeah you have to be very effective with your time on attack So now as you can see the Thermite Thatcher combo very very prominent being able to open this wall without much challenge. So this is very very good. Uh oh. Uh oh. So as you can see this hallway opening right it gives this Thermite such a wide range of uh, coverage right. So if any defender is playing inside this hallway and wants to rotate bomb sites, or they want to rotate from the stairs, this whole opening completely denies that. So it's it forces defenders to play in the bomb site itself. So this is why it's like very important to have a hard breach operator, hundred percent of the time. Only on coastline, but you know we're not talking about coastline. So oh, so close. If he had like insane reaction, maybe. Oh, this guy's crazy. They're cracked. So, uh, one thing to note is. So, I'll be starting a lobby again uh, for the second practical later on. For now, let's hop onto the slides again. Uh, let me change my uh, oh, stream labs. Yeah. Oh, I was using the wrong thing, anyways. Oh, I'm so sorry for that. Actually, I was supposed to be on a different. Yeah, I apologize. I apologize. Okay, let's answer some questions first. Uh, I have I can answer questions till about one. Let's see. Because if you bring Mozzie and get three drones, then kind of rubs if the guy never used or cannot position right. Uh, that's a bit of a misconception as well. Uh, how I like to use it in 
competitive is like uh let me think of how i can explain this simpler all right let's say let's say you and your teammate roaming right there's usually about two roamers right so let's say you and your teammate roaming you're both roaming oops my light is about to fall let's say you're roaming on the east side of the map right and there are maybe one hallway two doors to drone inside the east side let's say you use your pest for all three of these it denies the, the attackers from droning you completely. It's not about using the drone. It's about denying the drone. You know what I mean? It's like the attackers won't just throw their drone in and into a mozzie pest for free. Or let's say you put it in a connector. Connecting the east and the west, right? The attackers won't even want to just throw their drone for free. They would have to waste a lot more time waiting for the, another teammate to cover up and push with the drone and um they also wouldn't want to drone it lose the drone and lose control to the mozzie so it's not so much about that or let's say you're playing on the east side of the map as i say again and you put all three of your pairs or maybe two pairs in west now when the attackers are trying to clear the roamers they already don't know whether you're east or west but now they know that the west side cannot be droned so they would think that the attack the defenders are playing on the west side and this would waste a lot more time as well and wasting time is like the best thing you can do on defense unless you get an ace of course but i mean that's be <laughs> that's besides the point uh how effectively to use echo should i keep joining all of the possible attack paths or keep on one side so uh effective way to use um effective way to use echo is uh definitely try to keep one at least on site uh Personally, I keep one on each bomb site, so usually you would know where the default plants are. Like uh, on every map, every bomb site, there's always a a default place which attackers would use to plant. So keep your echo drones near there, uh, so that you can deny the plant. That's the strongest use of echo. Your echo shouldn't really be used for roamers so much. But let's say let's say you you have a defender on second floor, you are playing on basement. And your defenders are getting flushed out, right? Like the attackers are pushing your defend your roamers too hard. You can bring your yokai up to the first floor, onto like example main stairs, and leave your drone there so that you can give information to your roamers on second floor that hey, you can rotate down main stairs. Main stairs is clear, so that, that way your roamers will know like the best route to rotate back onto site because they know that it's a safe route, right? So let's say they're still opposite side of main stairs. But they're getting pushed. They would know to fall back in the direction of main stairs because they would know with your information that it's clear. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, the best use of echo is still definitely to uh, shoot, um, to deny the plant. So you hear someone planting, you know planting is 7 seconds. Maybe after the 5 seconds, you shoot an echo charge. And then you wait, shoot again. And if you know that the enemy team has an IQ player, and the wall above you is wall bangable try not to stay on your cameras too long and also try not to throw your yokais in positions which will get them killed so sometimes you don't even want them on ceilings you can throw them uh, below a, a car you can throw them above a car you can even pocket pick it like just hold it in so like let's say once the enemies are starting to push you throw the the yokai that way iq is unable to shoot your drone at any point of the round until the end which is very unlikely your voice makes me want to simp. Hey man, no one's stopping you from simping. Alright, let me just see if there's any questions directly from... Uh, Alright, there's no questions. Sick. So, uh, I would assume everyone, all the participants are in already. So, I will be starting session 2. Also, as always, participants, you are highly encouraged to put inside of the Discord chat as well. You can put it on Twitch, definitely, but uh, if you put it on Discord, uh, yeah, I will be reading the Discord before Twitch. So let's say Twitch has a lot of chat, I will still read the Discord first. Alright, everything's working, right? Everything's chill, everything's calm. Alright, let's go, part two. This is good, thank you. Alright. So, uh, just now we were covering a lot on the attackers. So, for participants, we were focusing a lot more on the attacking side earlier. 
So these two operators, Thermite and Thatcher, ever since they've been released in the game, which is basically on, on release, they are staple. You kind of never go wrong with them. So what you necessarily do, or like what roles... Oh yeah, now we'll be covering more on roles. Sorry, let me bring it up. Uh, refresher, right? So um, Thermite is a heart breacher. So what heart breachers do, they open walls that are reinforced. And you generally play more supportive roles, like you drone more, you... Uh, cover angles. You're not necessarily the guy that goes in and goes ba 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 ba, and everyone dies. All right, you're a bit more cool, calm, you know. So yeah, you just drone, you open walls. For Thatcher, it's the same thing, except usually these two operators are paired. So uh, try to stick together. And if you're with a friend, you could play these two operators because it's a lot easier to communicate if you're together. Uh. These are another playstyles. So on the left, we have Ash. Ash is uh, everyone knows Ash, <laughs> but uh, it's more of an aggressive role where you're the fastest operator in the game. Basically, a three speed. Uh, you have soft breach. So soft breach is basically a term for you can break soft walls. So like floors, ceilings, uh, even like shields, uh, maestro cameras, bulletproof cameras, anything that's a like not a reinforced wall, you can break it with your ash charge. So what you tend to do as an entry fragger is you have your teammates drone you into specific rooms that you will need to push for a bomb site, and you will be the one to push with the drone. So let's say I'm with an ash player, I would drone the ash as the ash follows my drone into the room. So that way my drone can give information first and then Ash goes right after to, you know, if there's a guy, he goes in to get a kill. Um, but definitely also something I would like to note is use your gadget first. Don't just rush. Rush bad. Push alone bad. <laughs> Try to play with your teammate as much as you can. I'll be talking more about that a bit later. So um, one thing about like breaching rounds is... Um, Try to use your gadgets before you die. And this applies to every operator, okay? So, uh, even though you're playing an aggressive role, try to use your... Not try. Use your gadgets before you engage in anything too risky, too dangerous. Try to see what your teammates need and um, work, work with them, yeah? So, for Sledge, it's a vertical operator. So, vertical is another term that we use. And it's, it's kind of only... Um, predominantly used in Rainbow Six, not so much in like CS or anything, even like Battlefield. Because so what vertical means is, uh, vertical operators can work as long as you have a shotgun, as long as you have sledge, buck, stuff like that. So, sorry if it's very loud outside. But, um, basically you open these angles, so let's say you know the bomb site's on the first floor, but your team has controlled the second floor. So now what you can do is, with your shotgun, or your sledgehammer, or your buck, skeleton key, you create holes vertically to force out defenders from where they're playing. So um, a good example from what I said earlier, example like the Thermite, right? You open up walls uh, to expose players behind boxes, behind shelves. So same thing with vertical operators. Let's say you know there's a box, right? It's a bit advanced because uh, you would have to know the map quite well. So definitely take your time to learn. It's not a rush. But once you learn it, it's very rewarding. So, um, let's say you know there's a box on that first floor that a lot of defenders like to play. As a vertical operator, from the second floor, you can open up the hole directly onto that table, get a free kill. If not, you have a teammate already on the first floor watching that box, and the moment that your vertical operator, I'll try to talk slower, opens the angle from above, it forces the defender to move away from the box, and the moment that Defender stands up or runs away, your other teammate on the first floor is able to get the kill. You know what I mean? If y'all are confused, you can tell me to stop if I'm speaking too fast. You can tell me to stop because I talk pretty fast. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, yeah, basically that's 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 it for that. Um That's also anchoring. So what anchoring is wait, sorry. Ah, this is on defense already. So now on defense, right? Uh, this is kind of somewhat the um, the opposite. On attack, it would be support roles. On defense, is anchor. Yeah. So basically what anchor does is you stay on site. Hence the term anchor where you just stay. You're anchored on the bomb site. So um, 
two very good anchors are smoke mute. So smoke, use it. There's no reason not to use it. It's like 99.9%. Just use it. It's so good. With a shotgun, you can open up rotations. With a gadget, you can deny plant. So good. The guns are a bit hard to use, like the SMG-11, but uh, once you learn how to use it, it's probably like one of the strongest guns. So, learn it. So uh, what you'd like to do is um, play near on site as a smoke. You try not to play too far off site because your gadget is very strong at denying plants, denying entryways. So the time that smoke really shines is the later half in the round. So uh, I always say this where, you know, the example, uh, the, the longer the round goes, the more it favors the defenders. Smoke makes that but makes that more like let's say there's 30 seconds left in the round the attackers can only push from two ways right example there's a door and a hallway that the attackers can push from let's say you're playing smoke 30 seconds left and you have three smoke canisters you throw one onto the hallway for example right the hallway oh no let's say you throw at a door so there's a door in a hallway you throw it at the door so your smoke canister lasts for 9 seconds. So, 9 seconds, pretty insane. You stack up 3, 27 seconds. So, this basically denies the attackers from pushing that door for the whole round. The whole end. Which means the attackers will only have one entry point, which is the hallway. Which means you can tell your whole team, like, I'm smoking off the door. And once you tell your whole team to smoke off the door, you can be like, everyone just watch the hallway. Because that would be the only entry point for the attackers. So it's smoke, use it. Very good. And um, if you're playing with friends, everyone will love you if you play smoke. Smoke is so good. Very, very, very good. Alright. So now for mute. Mute's another anchor pick usually. Uh, also has the same weapons as smoke. Um, except there's one thing a bit different on, on mute, which is the intel denial. So what intel denial is, is uh, I briefly talked about this on the stream as well. Um, you put jammers by doors, jammers by hallways, jammers by... Okay, so let's say you put it by door. Attackers won't be able to drone. So let's say you are roaming on the east side. I'll be talking about roaming. Roaming is basically anyone who plays outside of the bomb site. So let's say if roamers on the east side, you can put jammers on the west side. So that means attackers can't drone and they would assume that you are roaming on the west side even though you're on the east side. So this would waste a lot of time. So that's very good. Or let's say you want to put it on site. You could use it to deny staircases. So, you, you know, attackers are less likely to push on the staircase because they wouldn't have uh, good information because it puts them in a very uh, tough position to play. Or another very good thing about jammers, which works something like bandit batteries, is you can deny walls. So um, Thermite can't just open it for free. They would require like a uh, Thatcher, right? So that's what makes it very nice. Mute, very good. C4, very good. Staple character. Ah, uh, what if? Okay, what if I kill? What if I like the MP5K and the bulletproof camera? Um. Uh, so for mute, right? The MP5K, you usually as a mute player can use the MP5. You don't really have to bring a shotgun. Um, but this is only if you have a smoke. And um, in most cases, you would have a smoke. Like in, um, I would say 90% of the time, you would have a smoke player. So usually you wouldn't have to bring the shotgun. But if your team needs a shotgun, you should bring a shotgun. Uh, play for the team, not so much individually. And BC, like bullet, oh, sorry, bulletproof cameras, right? Um, short, uh, you know, BC. BC is like a bulletproof camera, BC. But... BCs are very good in this game as well, if you can put them in um, nice hallways or anything. Uh, but this is usually only if you need intel. So let's say your team doesn't want to play Maestro, Echo, Valkyrie, then you can play BC, so that uh, Bulletproof, so you can give information. But if you already have like Maestro cams, Valkyrie cams, watching your flank, watching your hallways, try to play Nitro Cells, so that you can deny bomb plants, you can kill players above you, stuff like that. 
P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-P-
some questions. So these are just like some general guideline questions you can ask yourself. Um, are you more of an aggressive or a passive player? Uh, do you have a, a better gunfight skills? I'm not saying you're Bolo Spoit or some insane gunner. I'm just saying like if you're, let's say you're Plat 3. Do you think your aim is better than other Plat 3s? Yeah, so it's relative. If so, we'll talk about that more. You can play Fragger Rolls, basically. Maybe play Zofia. Maybe play Ash. So do you, or do you just enjoy being more of like um, the support? Like you want to help your Fraggers. You want to play for the team. You're more team play. Try support roles. Heart Breach, Thatcher, Maverick. On defense, it'd be like Smoke, Mute, Maestro, Echo. Oops, let's skip a slide now. All right. Most important, right? I'll just read this word for word. The most important thing in, in this team game is that you are not just playing for yourself. Your kills, your KDR, how your stats, your... Oh, I, I got 4 KD, but we still lost. Oh, man. Oh, oh, I keep getting the first kill. We keep I keep making it 5v4, but we still lose. It's the team. It's the team. Try not to think too much like that. Uh, Play with the team, for the team, not just for yourself you may think that getting that first kill like spawn peak right let's say you spawn peak as a defender you kill one guy you would think that that helps your team somewhat yes but if it's not impactful it's bad it's like there's no point you getting a kill and dying straight away if your teammates can't make use of your information can't make use of your kill they can't do anything there would be no point so the most important is to always just support one another uh, yeah, these slides are well done. Thank you. Your boy made them. Your boy, dude. Did, wait, is my webcam off? Did I turn it off by accident? Uh-oh. I'm back. <laughs> Oopsie. I did... Oh, oopsie. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, just support one another. It's important. Uh, let's see. Bro, my hair is whack. My hair is oily. I'm an oily boy. Alright, let's go to the next slide. Lastly, most, 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 most important to especially new players. Anyone who's like under level 100 especially. Take your time. Don't be stressed. Uh, seeing a lot of these guys who are like level 200, 300 on casual, just like, bow, 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 bow. Relax, cool down. They spend a lot of time on the game. You just learn at your own pace. Take it, you know, slowly. Take it your own pace, yeah. You're not in a rush. You're not trying to be the best player, Pengu or anything. You just want to improve. And it's with this mindset where you actually can improve. Don't start uh, being jealous of other people like, uh, oh man, I suck, I suck, I suck. Uh, my gunfight's so bad. Oh, I'm getting old. I can't play anymore. Stop. Don't don't think so negative, dude. You got to bring yourself up. And the main thing also is if you have friends, boost them up. You know, positive reinforcement. Say like, dude, you're nuts every time you do something crazy. And for yourself as well, you need to take your time. Like, you know you did something good. Acknowledge that, like, hey, I'm improving. Or if you did something bad, don't think like, ah, I suck. Just think like, hmm, what should I have done? Maybe I should have swapped operators. Maybe I can try pushing from this side instead or something like that. Or maybe I should just drone more. Don't think like, ah, it's the end of the world. Sometimes you don't even know what role suits you. For me, I've been playing for four years. I played Heart Breach and Support only for two years straight. I never touched fragging roles until now. And now is when I realize, hey, I'm more suited for a flex operator. Smokes, utilities, more brain operators. So take your time. There's no rush. All right, let's see. Always have some bad apple in the community. Yes, there's always going to be a few bad apples. Yeah, level 100 is relatively new. It took me like one month to hit level 100. Everyone just got uh, enjoy. It's a game. Enjoy. And that's coming from someone who takes this game seriously. Most important is to enjoy the process. Learn at your own pace. See improvement. If you're not having improvement, identify maybe what's going wrong. That's really best advice I can give you. Don't look at 
bolo and go, wow, why is my aim not like that? I put in 10 hours in Kovac, aim trainer. Don't go like, man, if only I could understand the game as much as Pengu. There's no need. There's no need. Those guys played for years and years and years and years and years and hours and hours. If you don't enjoy the game, the process of learning is much slower. Very true. And with that, I'll be setting up practical numero dos. Number two. I'll be still doing clubhouse. Because I think now everyone has a better feel for the map. Um, next workshop, maybe change up the maps. Um, I will listen to whatever feedback we may have and you know if you have any suggestions feel free to write in the workshop chat the admins and i will see that and take it into account yeah enjoy the game but sometimes the team just makes it tough to go on yes um especially like solo queuing it's it's hard definitely but um if your goal is to improve individually you shouldn't i know you would unintentionally care but try to ignore you know like you're not playing how to say i'm not saying that you should don't play for the team but i'm just saying you shouldn't you should play to prioritize your learning right if that makes sense like don't focus like ah oh, man my teammates keep dying or like ah oh, dude why does he keep picking Kevera? Ah oh, this Ash keeps rushing. Don't think like that. Just think like what you can do to win. Or what you can do to improve yourself. Like let's say you wanna practice your aim. Maybe you T hunt fifteen minutes before ranked every time. Maybe now you T hunt thirty minutes. Or you can try warm up in a different way, like download an aim trainer just to warm up your hands a bit before you enter the games. Stuff like that. Just try things out. Don't take it too hard on yourself personally. Some, most of the time, you can't control others. Oh, it's more like the verbal and voice abuse, not so much other than... Yeah, I understand. Um, Unfortunately, all you can do is just mute. And it's relatively effective to just mute. Um, yeah, like um, just mute. Yeah. As long as you're focused on your individual and not uh, getting too negative over other things. I mean, a bouncer runs a couple of games. I've accepted that I'm not much better than my team. Ah. Uh, I mean, that's the thing, right? Um, there's a lot of things to learn also about the game, actually. So, um, as long as you're not too hard on yourself, be your hardest critic but don't critique yourself until you want to quit if you meet no more callouts um i mean it depends like let's say your teammates aren't giving you callouts they're just saying bad things then yeah you meet it's no point arguing because something a lot of people on ranked please if you're in this chat now right Mr. Whoever is in this escape esports watching the stream in any game you play if you're playing ranked and you're trying to climb the ladder as a random solo queue or duo queue trio queue stop flaming okay telling people you suck it's not going to make them suddenly play better tell them hey could you join me instead or hey I'll join you or like um yo maybe you can try playing something else Oh, uh, like, and then when they do something good, you just go like, oh, dude, you're crazy. You're nuts. Let's go. We can win. Don't go like, ah, shit, it's over. You suck. Oh, you're trash. Dude, stop throwing, dude. Uh, it doesn't work. But of course, if people don't listen at all, then, uh, I mean, that's just the downside of solo key. Yeah, I gotta be honest here. But uh, if you really are interested in improving climbing rank, I highly suggest you find like-minded people. Find maybe one, two friends minimally, you know, who also want to improve around the same elo, stuff like that. And you can learn together. Learning together is really good. If they are having more negative comments than doing calls, I'd rather you mute. Yeah. 
Because uh, if you get these negative thoughts in your head, you're not going to play well yourself either, right? So, it's a lot of mental game. Who's the last person? I'm not sure. Fox, could you invite? What I found out in solo queue is if you give calls but your teammates don't, just keep giving calls eventually, they'll start doing Yes. Yes. I agree, 100%. You need to be the initiator, right? The the one starting. Because to them, it's the same thing. For them, they think that all teammates don't talk. So if you think that way, you talk. Paybox Ted talk? Hell yeah, dude. Alright, we're gonna start now. Did they praise the team until they tell you to shut up? Hey, that's better than you scold your team until they tell you to shut up. So, that's good. I need a P really bad. But let's not talk about that. <laughs> Wrong map. Wrong map, sorry. But let's just <laughs> continue. Oh, uh, that's an oopsie. Let's just act like nothing went wrong. Um, so yeah, now we'll be focusing more on the defending side instead of the attacking. So let's see what um what they're up to. So as you can see, the defenders they pick two ACOG operators, Rook and Doc. Uh, coastline. Um. It's a very gunfight map, so this is actually pretty different, so... You know, I could probably talk about it, yeah. Like, Coastline is, um... The most... Not Rainbow Six, Rainbow Six map. It's not so much utility focus, more... Gunfight focused, um... Which, you know, which is why... You, as you can see from the attackers, I always suggest you bring Thermite Thatcher, for example. But uh, in this case, you don't really need it because on Coastline, there's no real need to open too many walls. Most of the time, you can do without opening reinforced walls. And this is probably the only attacker-sided map in the whole game. Yeah. So on the defense as well, usually you would hear me say Doc is not good, Rook is not good. Uh, still stand by my statement where in most cases, you shouldn't pick them, even on coastline. But uh, especially on maps where winning and losing a round is usually determined by who gets more kills. It's not too bad, you know. Something I like to tell my my team is, um, if you're confident that you can pick Doc and get two kills, one kill, sure. Something like that. Is this 5v5? Yes, pop. Welcome to the stream, by the way. Welcome to Mr. Scape Esports stream. See, as you can see, right, in, in this case where Rin is staying, this is the B bomb site, and right next to the B bomb site is already where the outside is, where the attackers can play. So, this is why it's a bit hard for defenders, and why it relies a lot on gunplay as compared to um, utility. Teamwork. Yeah. So let's see what others are doing. So it looks like the defenders are going for a very anchor based setup, which is not wrong. But uh, I always suggest people try to play Rome if they can in 80% of the cases. Because Romans are the people who can waste a lot of time. See now, it looks like the lot has gone by as you know each team has already lost Attackers one player. Not two. But let's say you have a Roma. By now, it'd probably be already 30, 40 seconds, maybe. Something to keep in mind. Man, I'm a very bad spectator. But yeah, so... With this amount of time, it gives the attackers um, a lot of time to prepare how they want to attack. How they want to push together as a team. Uh, where they want to push from. So as a defender, especially for the roamers, your job is to make it very hard for attackers to decide on a plan. Basically, you're there to distract them. Let's 
let's act like we didn't see anything. But basically as a roamer, your job is not to stay hidden and flank very late. Uh, I think this is something a lot of people get uh, mixed up and confused with. As a roamer, you don't always want to be hidden. Sometimes, most of the time, you want the attackers to know where you are so that they will find you and hunt you. And it's within this hunting time that, as a roamer, you can waste a lot of time. And if you are, what determines a very good roamer is to understand when they should waste time and when they can go for kills. And how to waste the time, basically. Like, for example, like a good roamer can waste 40, 50 seconds, maybe, of the attacker's time just for hunting you. A bad roamer will just die in 10 seconds. Yeah, we didn't see anything. What? Huh? Doki V? Huh? Huh? What? What? One tap? Die in 10 seconds, I think it's a bad spawn peak. <laughs> yeah, can as well. Yeah, makes sense. Just keep in mind, spawn peaking doesn't teach you anything, by the way. It's like, you. I'm not saying it's wrong, but, um,. If you really want to learn, spawn peeking won't help you learn. It'll just teach you how to spawn peek. That's it. Alright. Defenders, protect your bombs from being diffused by So, uh, I remember someone in the morning or uh, earlier in the session, I mean, asking about whether you should use trap operators, Capcom. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I wouldn't say cap gun is a wrong pick, but it's really you need to be able to identify whether it's being effectively used. Are you making use of the C4 to deny plants, uh, getting kills? The C4. Are your cap gun traps actually hitting people? Also, is another important question. Um, because if it is, it's not wrong to use it again. But let's keep in mind that playing trap operators once makes it very predictable you might be playing it a second time. So something to keep in mind. Um, so if you're playing trap operators, it's not wrong as long as you know whether it's being effectively used. Let's say no one gets hit by it or your C4s are ineffective. I would suggest you switch operators. Because you could be playing Jaeger, denying nades, you could be playing Legion, helping your team. Or Maestro to use cameras and give information to your teammates. So yeah, you just need to be able to identify whether it's you know benefiting your team or not. Doorway, trap. Stay clear of blast zone. A bomb has been located. Oh, this is why you need therm uh Jaeger, right? If you had Jaeger putting an ADS there. Rin would be able to stay alive. So being a Jaeger player, you need to know where your teammates are playing so that you know where to put your uh, ADSs. Something to keep in mind. And usually there are quite a few default positions. Like example right now would be this blue staircase. You usually want to have an ADS on this staircase. One more ADS inside of this room called Hookah. Right in front of where Wasbu the Legion is playing. So just something to keep in mind. Oh, wow, that's a sneaky boy. That, that's a that's a sneaky boy. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. All right. See, that's what happens when you don't have information. Let's say they had a camera on the bomb site. Uh, Choco, the mute player, would have been able to identify that there's a player who already entered. Yeah? That's why information in this game massive for attackers. Use your drones very wisely. Use your drones effectively. Don't just throw your drones and lose it immediately. For defenders, use intel operators like Valkyrie, Echo. Gives your teammates on site more information, roamers more information. Oh, unlucky. You can almost never go wrong with information operators. That's why Mute is so good. Uh, Echo is so good. Maestro is so good. Valkyrie is so good. Okay, let's see what's what's chat up to a bit. Uh, I'll read Endless thing in a bit. It's very long. 
Just like you. <laughs> Alright, so that's 1v1. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. 15 seconds left. Scene. Alright, so let's read Endless question. Do you feel like a cat gun being picked? Attackers will have to rely really slow down and double check every door before they push ops if attackers are trying to clear. Yes. I think something that makes Capcom very effective, especially if you put them on doorways entering a bomb site, is that let's say you want to let's say as an attacker, right? You plan to push this door to enter the bomb, but there's a Capcom trap. And the angle of the cap contract makes it very hard for you to shoot it without exposing yourself. It makes it very hard for attackers. Because the moment they shoot the cap contract, they're, you know, basically effectively exposing themselves, right? And it's during this time frame where defenders can easily get a free pick. So instead of a cap contract doing 60 damage, instead it's just you killing a player. And on big maps, very big maps like Clubhouse, Villa... What are the big men? Basically, mainly clubhouse. Ah, Villa. Villa, especially. Villa, Capcom is very effective. A lot of doors. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs so, as they can. So, it's good. When used correctly. Uh, the position of Capcom traps? Uh, hard to say. Let's say you have a lot of roamers on the east side. You could put it on the east side to help your roamers. Basically, it works as a barbed wire, right? Like a barbed wire that does damage and doesn't slow, basically. So, you use it like that, or your Roma's on the west side, you put the Capcom traps on the east side. So that effectively uh, effectively means you have two threats on Rome on the east and west. So you have Roma's on the east side, to, the west side to get kills, and you have Capcom traps on the east side to give you information and do a bit of damage. So this is kind of how you want to work with it. Attacker's objective is to defuse a bomb. Camera in position. I found the R6 Facebook page, but the Discord brought me to the link. I, uh, I think No Use Talking will tell you more about that. Attackers yeah, Capcom Traps are the 5 teammates. If Capcom Traps had voice, Attackers sometimes it's better in <laughs> some True, true. If Capcom Traps could talk, oh man. They probably do more damage than random people. Feels bad. So, same thing here. You can see the defenders are all playing on site. I don't recommend this, especially on a map like Coastline. Because hunkering down on a bomb site makes it. Ooh, that's very good. Hunkering down on a bomb site makes it very hard for you to rotate out. And most of the time, your teammates will end up watching the exact same angle, which is very ineffective way to play. You want to try and have everyone watch something different so you can cover more space without really losing too much. Oh, this is something I want to point out. This is vertical. So That is why you bring nitro cells. So vertical opens up these line of sights that exposes the defenders on the bomb site so they can't play so comfortably. Right now, the sledge wasn't able to effectively open up holes, which is why the you know c force is so good right but let's say sledge open up a hole right above rin that's a free kill and that's a smoke and we all and we just discussed smoke is a very 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 effective operator to deny plant so getting a kill onto a smoke is always very very good how do you know sledge was going to be there in this case it's most likely by luck but in most cases, if you understand, if you know the map really well, oh no, oh unlucky. In most cases, if you know the map very well, you would know where there is a bed, where there is a table, where there's a shelf, and you would know where people like to commonly play. So in this case, on coastline, um, usually sledge players will sledge the bed near the bed, because. It's around the bid where you get to watch the rotation between the A-bomb and the B-bomb. At the same time, you can open up angles into the back of service, which is where the shelf is, which uh, tends to be a very common angle for defenders to play. 
So usually you would want to see four positions which are common sledge spots, or you know that the sledge is going to sledge it next. So let's say the basic route of sledge is the sledge on the left side of the bid and then the right side of the bid. So as a defender, if you know that the sledge has already opened the left side of the bid, you know, what I'm saying? If you know the defender has already opened the right side of the bid, you can throw your C4 first onto the left side, and the moment the sledge walks over and you hear the footstep, you click it. Attackers. You know what I mean? Uh, so it, it, it's, one is you need to know the map. Two is you just need to know, have a very um, smart guess where the next position of the sledge is going to go. Like one, one common spot, you see it on the middle of my screen now, this opens the line of sight into, if you remember where the smoke died last round, another common area defenders like to play. If you know that there is a sledge already inside of this room VIP, you could see for this spot immediately because it's the most common position to open. Yeah. It comes with experience. So. Man, I really got to use the washroom. <laughs> Alright. So, oh, interesting operator here. Mira. Um, Mira doesn't really fall inside any category necessarily. It's kind of like there is no replacement to Mira almost. I see you have deployable shoes now, but... Uh, interesting operator. You have a shotgun to open vertical holes. Something to just note. Uh, this is very aggressive. So, for example, people who like to play like this, they tend to like to play Jaeger, like to play Ash on attack, Sophia on attack, Twitch on attack. So, you can really see how someone's uh, play style is like through like their personality. I mean, vice versa as well. Follow me. We have this. Claim all mine going down. That's a bad C4. Let's just act like we didn't see that. <laughs> oh no. Bomb located by attackers. Spawn because our toxic personality. Yeah, oh, yeah, dude. Be anyone who knifes the floor after getting a kill, toxic personality. So this is Monty. Uh I won't say it's hard to use, but it's hard to master. Please tell me they cancel this plant. No, yes! This guy is so good. Hello? Well, that's a misplay because Monty only blocks front, right? It doesn't block the side. So that's a misplay. So if you have a Monty in that situation, you would want to clear the immediate left and immediate right before the Monty goes in. Yes. I need to drink water. Water break, everyone drink up, don't get dehydrated and heat wave stroke, whatever, right? Drink water. Water is the best gaming fuel, don't drink G fuel or uh, Red Bull, unless you sponsor me, thank you, Mr. Red Bull, man. But other than that, don't, don't drink too much, dude, just drink water. Water keeps the brain going, keeps the juices flowing. Alright. Looks like there's some interesting picks. Tachanka Echo Warden. Interesting picks. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused uh, by attackers. Something I would like to note. Um, I forgot to cover this. It's it's not really today's class, it's more of last week, but just a reminder. Considering if you look at the left side or the blue team, uh, you'd realize none of them are bringing barbed wires. Um, I, I, I would like to suggest like, at least 90% of the time, have two operators with barbed wires. If not barbed wires, at least have one operator barbed wire, one operator with proximity alarms. Try not to rely solely on hearing or anything. 
Because barbed wires work as a, as a deterrence. Let's say you put a barbed wire on the staircase. It's very unlikely for the attackers to continue wanting to push from the staircase. But having nothing there at all prompts them to do it. So unless you're very set on a strategy and you really know how to play as a team, uh, try to use proximity alarms, barbed wires, because they give you information. See, echo drones, uh, if used correctly, can be very effective. Uh, something I would like to suggest, um, to example Zoom, if Zoom wants to watch this pod, is you should then use your yokais like this. Uh, if you're using your yokais to deny plant, uh, if possible, try not to put it in a spot that can be shot easily. Like, example, in this case, they could put it right behind the door, right? So that when attackers push in to destroy it, they would have to turn up and it exposes their entire body. So that would be much better. Or, you could hide it behind a table and when you know that the attackers are going for a plant, then you jump with your yokai, you disable the plant, and job done. Attackers have recovered their debut. Ooh. Uh, I will get back to that message from Nui Stalking in a second. A lot of red dot sites I'm seeing actually, it's kind of interesting. Uh, not many people who like red dot. Also, Flynn was asking about the attachments. I'm sorry, I forgot to go through that. After this practical, if you remind me. I'll give a brief uh, explanation on the different gadgets and uh, attachments. Oh! So close. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! That's a nice try from Rex. Uh, that's the leaning mechanic being used effectively. That was good. It's good to see. So this is what makes smoke so good. Oh, you saw the backpack. Ah! Oh no. Loading new it's okay, we act like we didn't see that. It's okay. The duties are in place. This is the effectiveness of smoke. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. That's very nice. Alright, I realize most people don't really know what to set up their gadgets slash drones. Any tips for beginners on that? Um, for defenders, uh, the way you use your gadgets is quite simple. In um, there's always like a base strategy where it's like um, it's all rounder where you focus your utility mainly on the bomb site, barbed wires on doors in the bomb site, goo mines in hallways near the bomb site. Drones like echo drones, Valkyrie cams near the bomb site or in hallways outside of the bomb site door or outside the bomb site hallway, like directly outside. Um, or another way you can use uh your gadgets. I would I wouldn't say too advanced. So like um like barbed wires. If you want to control a staircase, barbed wires are the best because playing a vertical angle is disadvantageous. So something to keep in mind. So put barbed wires. Um, uh, Defenders, protect your if you can put barbed wires in positions that are relatively hard to hit, like example, that's a very long hallway, and you put it in the middle. It's very hard for defenders to uh, attackers to clear it without having to walk up and expose themselves to the hall hallway. So one good example, example this hallway right here. If you look right in the middle of this screen. Let's say there's an attacker coming from the, the north and the south, the top and the bottom, Attackers right? They would have to walk half the hallway just to reach their barbed wire to destroy it. So the moment they hit that barbed wire, they, you already know as a defender that they are exposed and they cannot hide anywhere. So it's very easy to get the kill. Five seconds left. But a bad place to put it would be, example, Attackers right now in the middle of my screen. It, 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 it'll be put in a position where you don't have defenders being able to properly make use of the barbed wire they won't be able to kill the guy 
they won't even be able to like have the Romans rotate or anything. So, so that's a rule of thumb. Uh, for drones, treat it like a life. If you don't have to lose your drone, don't lose your drone. Drone it live, like let's say if your teammate needs it, then you use your drone. Or let's say you have to clear a room, then you use your drone. Or if you're sneaky enough and you can hide a drone inside of a bomb site, use it that way. Uh, another good effective way is let's say you pushed up a staircase to control a room. Um, now you need to stay with that room, right? Now you need to control it and make sure you don't lose it. What you can do is you put a drone on that staircase you came up from to have someone watch your flank. So, for example, you have a teammate that died. You can say, hey, can you get on my drone? It's the fifth drone. Then they'll be like, alright, I'm on it. Then, that way, you don't have to watch your own flank anymore because you have someone else to watch it for you on the drone. So, that those are some effective ways to make use of it, guys. Hello, Mr. Lo Liang. What's going on now? So, this is basically like a Rainbow Six workshop. So, we're just teaching a bit of the basics of uh, Rainbow Six. Today, we're covering more on the introduction of operators. I'll read that in a second. Very long. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Attackers have dropped the bomb diffuser. Ooh, bye bye. If your drone is far away, just have a strategic placement, no need to recover it. Yep. So, uh, effective way, flank drones. Flank drones, it's, it's very good. Uh, if you have the time to spare to move your drones, because everyone else has lost their drones, then you bring it. But if you don't have time, it's usually never really worth to recover it. Just try to find a, the nearest place you can move it to and just leave it there. Attackers recover the diffuser. 15 seconds left. 10 seconds to go. 5 seconds remaining. Uh, I'll read a lot of those later. Oh, that's a nice pick. That's very... Wow, this guy is crazy. We'll have one last round, yeah? Alright. Let's see. I'll start with Zeph. Um, Zera, sorry. Once everything's scanned and prepped, I try to return my drone to my operator, but sometimes I get lost and spend a couple minutes trying to retrieve it. I mean, that's when you need to just learn the map, right? You need to know where the drone holes are and everything, so... Take your time in that. Learning the map... I would say in Rainbow Six, the most intimidating thing is already learning the map. So, um, once you learn the map, you basically learn like 30% of the game, 40%. It's a very good baseline. It sounds like a small percentage, but that's because this game has a lot of things. Can you use your drones to support your souls? 100%. 100%. That's one of the best ways to use it. Actually, flank watch drones, effectively watching your own flank as an attacker is probably one of the hardest things to do properly. A lot of pro teams struggle with it as well. But you need to know what is needed Defenders as a flank. You need to know, example, you need to know what staircases you are prone to. What are the different rotations that uh, attacking Romans can flank you from. You need to know uh, what spaces you have controlled and what you have not controlled. Uh, now with Enlo. Uh, any tips on how to play Vert? I see a lot of people die a lot while playing Vert. One rule of thumb is, especially for like Sledge or, yeah, especially Sledge, when you open a hole, try not to just open one hole and peek it straight away. Try to open a couple, like open three, four holes, and then go to maybe a second hole, the third hole. Don't immediately break one hole and peek it, because one, you would need to open other holes after that, so try not to risk your life. Two, um, having only one hole makes it so that it's a lot easier for defenders to know which hole to look at because there's only one hole. 
They would just have to look at this one hole and you're exposing yourself to C4, exposing yourself to get shot. So try to always open a few holes. Being effective about what to open, you will learn with time as you learn the how the map looks like vertically. It's like you're on second floor, but you can have a good understanding how the first floor looks like so you know what you're opening. But that, that, that comes with time. But the basically rule of thumb is don't expose yourself too much when you're making holes. Open a few. Don't just open one peak. It's straight away. It, it, you're, you're leaving yourself to very prone. Yeah. As Singapore team second in Asia, what? Reloading. We'll be inactive. It's all right. They can stick around. It's just for the community. Whenever you feel like chatting, you can just chat with people. It's kind of sick. Like if you don't feel like chatting, you just want to read up some stuff. It's cool too. They're like Rainbow Six news channels and everything, so you get updated on stuff as well. You don't really have to do much. Just enjoy your time there. And whenever there's like a local event, like a LAN event or like a community LAN event or online um, party game events or whatever, then you know you can just get notified. And whenever you you want to join, just just join. It's open to everyone. Incredible. Ooh, unlucky. This is good though. This is called trading. I we covered this last week. And hey, not last week. Last session. Ah, this is risky. You see? This is very risky from this sledge player. This is leaving himself very exposed. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the mic. This is why vertical play is very important. You force players outside of comfortable positions and this is what makes Rainbow Six different from other games. I'm not trying to sell out why this game is good. I'm just saying it creates a whole new dimension. All right, let's uh, head back to the slides. Uh, we'll go through a short debrief like uh, overview of today. Um, a bit of the practical, answer some short Q&A and we will try to be prompt with the ending of this stream because this stream, uh, we'll be ending this session at 2 but we will have to definitely cover stuff first oh sorry yeah. Fuse plus Sledge is good um, uh, not really I wouldn't even say fuse is good. Um, if you really want to use fuse, I would suggest you using like uh, you have a one vertical operator like sledge or buck to open holes, and you have like lion to call. So like once lion activates his gadget and the fuse charge goes off, everyone's forced to run. Yeah, it's a tough time for the defenders. It's really tough time. I'll wait for about uh, 30 seconds. I will check the Discord if there's any questions first. Uh, doesn't seem to be any questions. I have a DM. Let me read that on my second screen. Webcam did. Webcam did. Oh, yeah, sorry. I hit a wrong button. Thanks for informing everyone as well in the chat as well. Uh, yeah, looks like there is no questions in the... Yep, there's no questions. Alright. Uh, let me read some. How to hit diamond. Uh, unfortunately, fortunately as well, uh, this game is very team-based. So um, to hit diamond, most of the time you would have to have a stack. Like at least, at least minimally a duo. Someone you can work with. And um, definitely put in hours. You have to be quite all-rounded as well as like you i wouldn't say in, in rank it's different in rank you don't really have to understand the game it's more of how you gunfight so um yeah it's, it's a different thing but yeah, having a stack definitely works uh if you're solo queue try to encourage your teammates give callouts even if your teammates aren't giving callouts give callouts 
it encourages them to give back callouts as well. And positive reinforcement can't emphasize enough. If someone does something really good, like he someone gets an ace, con- like say something good, like dude, you're insane, oh you're cracked, oh you're insane, oh dude, you're the best. Something like that, right? Like you gotta encourage people. Don't just say, eh, dude, you're trash, oh stop stop throwing, oh you're bad, oh something like that. Like try to suggest like hey, maybe we can play safer, can probably play on site. I think we can play slower, stuff like that. And if they're unhappy, oh, well, you can't really control everyone, so um, unlucky. Okay, let's read some more. Uh, Echo drone, stay on site or help roam. In most cases, on site, because it's very good at denying uh, plants. It's probably the best gadget to use to deny plant besides like C4, right? And um, to help roam is not necessarily you put it for roam, I would say. But let's say your your defenders are ro- you have Romans on second floor, and your bomb sites on basement. You could bring your yokai drone onto the first floor like staircase so that you can tell like your romans like hey main stairs is clear so that way your defenders would know that if they are getting pushed by the attackers a lot they could fall back through main stairs as they would know that their route will be clear and safe if you had a choice to come up with a new op what gadgets would you give I mean, it's hard to come up with something new. Uh, probably something that disables gadgets for attacks. Something like an EMP, but not. Maybe even like, uh, let's say like, uh, just thinking of this on the spot, because personally, I don't like operators that meta define, like Lion when it was first released, Jackal when it was first released, um, Malusi Ace, the newest two operators. Those are quite meta changing operators. I would like something more simple like Sledge, Buck. Uh, IQ, but I think maybe a cool idea would be like a gadget that if you, example, you shoot this thing and it hits a maestro cam, you control the maestro cam. Might be sick. So you don't have to like do KB hack. So I think that would be cool. But it's like maybe you shoot it, you control the gadget totally, so the defenders can't use it. Only you can use it, rather than do KB, which is like a double edge. I think that would be quite cool. How to live drone someone properly? Um. One tip I can give is you tell the person where you're joining next. You don't just example, right? Let's say I'm joining. Yo, I'll join you up main stairs. Main stairs clear, lobby clear, uh, bedroom clear, penthouse clear. Don't join it like that. Join it like I'm joining main stairs, main stairs clear. I'm going to join lobby next, lobby clear. I'm going to join bedroom, bedroom clear. I'm going to join penthouse, penthouse clear. So that way, you give your teammate more time to uh, take in where you're joining next so he would follow it properly and also your teammate shouldn't be too close to the drone but he should be close enough to make use of whatever call out you give from the drone so let's say you say uh jaeger hard left off on the door that way immediately your teammate you're joining for can get the kill rather than it's too far back or he dies before you the drone even spots the guy in the door and uh try not to live drone too much like too far i mean like Live drone into one, two rooms, uh, live drone into important spaces, but don't like live drone until you're stuck in spawn by your teammates all the way in the bomb site. Don't do that too much, yeah. Mm, I'll answer maybe about three, four more questions. If anything, you can always DM me on Discord or uh, soon I'll have my socials posted. You can DM me on Twitter or Instagram. Okay, wait. Uh, let's see. I'll read, uh, yeah, I'll do about three more questions. How about that? I'll do three more questions. Let's see, uh, um, I too OP with C4. That's good. You should be good with C4. C4 is a very strong gadget. Just use it. It's not toxic. Then my side profile actually looks nice. Once you look at my front, oh man, oily oily forehead all right let's see let's see a few more when to use ibana over thermite let's say on uh, clubhouse right the map we played earlier mats which require opening of hatches you use hibana Ma- uh, maps that you require using thermite to open up a big hole because you plan to run through a wall thermite is better but let's say even for walls let's say you don't need 
to push the wall. As I said, you can always just open up reinforcements to expose angles, make it so that defenders can't play comfortably behind a table or box. You can use Hibana because you're not planning to go through it, you're just planning to use it to open a different angle, right? So yeah, that, that's when you use Hibana. But mainly, rule of thumb, hatches, Hibana, walls, thermite. So that's one question down, I can answer two more. Any good suggestions on how to Kobe C4 nade a toxic nade? It's really just practice, my guy. Like, um, a lot of throwables have similar weight. So like C4, right, is heavier than an impact grenade. But a lot of these, you just need to practice, honestly. I don't think there's much outside of it. If you're planning to use, like, uh, aggressively, C4s, like, if you want to throw it vertically, learn spots which um example you have a sledge sledging you from above learn spots which most likely the sledge will go so you can predict their route so i, I was saying this on stream if, if they sledge the right side of the bit and you know the next spot they're gonna sledge is the left side of the bitch usually throw a c4 on the left side of the bit 70 percent time you'll get it uh for smoke canisters if you're smoking a doorway don't smoke past the doorway smoke in front of the doorway or smoke it on the door like the side of the door, like the wall next to the door. I forgot. I can't think of it now. The word, but don't throw it too deep. But it's a lot of it's practice. But once you get used to it, it's like you could use it on any map. Like it doesn't have to be a specific bomb site angle. Like you could on the on the fly, you immediately know like how high you should aim everything. But it takes a while. Let's see, last last question. Last question. Let's see. Is there any? Uh, last question. I'll just get this. Uh, let me check if the Discord any priority questions. Tips on recoil control. All right, this will be the last question I'll be covering from Woke. Um, something I'd like to. Uh, this will even go into Flynn. I will try to keep this in about three minutes. So, um, recoil control. A lot of guns have different recoil control. Some are higher, some are lesser, and it depends a lot on the fire rate. So, personally. If you're playing a higher sensitivity, like higher ADS sensitivity, as in like scoping sensitivity, it's easier to control recoil. Uh, but it's harder to make micro adjustments. But yeah, and um, use vertical grip. If you cannot control a recoil, don't try to be fancy and angle grip. Just use vertical grip. Uh, use flash hider. Flash hider is the best barrel to use to reduce overall recoil. So to anyone who's like new to the game, use flash hider. Don't use compensator. Compensators, don't bother. It's it's pretty bad, unless the gun has already zero recoil. Then you can use compensator long barrel. But if the gun has some recoil, I recommend flash hider. For uh, grips, if you can control recoil, use angled grip. I suggest use angled grip. It's more versatile. Uh, does that answer your question? What okay. Uh, but recoil control, flash hider, yeah, flash hider, vertical grip, probably the best way already. And uh, increase your ADS sensitivity. I don't really suggest a sensitivity thing unless you really have to. But um, some guns you don't really want to spray. Like, for example, SMG-11, right? You want to burst it or tap it at long range. You don't want to spray long range. Once it comes to the mid-range, close range, pull down. Just pull down. Just pull down. Just pull down. It should be alright. And, uh... Don't need to be so hard on yourself with headshots. Like example, if you're playing Buck with a very high recoil on the C8, where a primary weapon, right? You can always aim head first and overcompensate. And if you kill the guy by the chest, it's fine. Then you adjust from there slowly. Yeah, I think that's the last question I will answer. If anything, DM me on Discord, Twitter, Instagram. This is my socials you can take a picture of this if you want that's my beautiful face um if you think my voice is sexy you can follow me on my socials i don't really stream or youtube as much anymore but i will be getting that into that so if you follow my twitter and everything you'll be posted with um yeah you'll be posted with those so yep this is all from me my instagram my twitter and uh some final messages from uh scape and r6sc is uh, if you enjoy 
this session, I highly suggest you um, look up and sign up for the other workshops. There will still be three more workshops on the 29th of August, 26th of September, and 3rd of October at 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., just like today. And one more thing for all those who signed up, right, and all those who um, enjoyed the session, and especially because there's three more workshops left, if you sign up for at least three of the five workshops and you participate in the workshop, you will be getting 2,400 in-game Rainbow Six credits for free. Stongs. You learn game, get better, and credits. Insane, right? Insane. And, um, sorry. Yeah, basically, I really suggest you um, sign up if you think you've learned something today or you enjoyed your session. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything else. So, uh, without further ado, I think that concludes today's, um, little workshop yeah so uh thank you everyone for watching uh spending this time with me and the other admin from scape and the admin from rainbow six sage uh singapore community if you want if you're a fan of rainbow six and you're from singapore i highly suggest you message the person in the chat no use talking um because we run the rainbow six community in singapore so if you want to be posted about local events um or you want to be part of the community and be invited in like uh, LAN events or part like casual for fun LAN events. Um, you want to watch Pro League together, everything. You can use this Discord uh, for other things. And if you enjoy these kinds of esports things, I highly suggest you follow this Scape Esports Twitch channel because there's a lot of stuff coming. And uh, there's some just chatting, some party games. I, there's some Mobile Legends if you like that. There's tutorials on that. Yes. If that's all, hey man, I'm just an admin, I'm just supporting the community. <coughs> welcome, welcome, thank you. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the workshop as well. If anything, thank you for all the participants for today. It was a good day today. Uh, yeah, I saw some of y'all doing some insane stuff. Uh, definitely just need to touch up a bit. Don't be too hard on yourself. Learn at your own pace. Don't tilt, just relax. Be focused and if you enjoy your process, you're going to improve at a much more drastic rate. And if that's all, that's all, all right? Thank you for the stream once again. And bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye, bye-bye. Everyone have a good weekend. Have a good Saturday. Rest up, sleep till like 2 in the morning and then continue playing rank on Sunday. Enjoy all of your time. Join the Discord. Follow this scape on all your socials. And, um, Peace sign in the chat. Peace. Uh, oh, I can't see the peace. Peace. Goodbye.